So here we have a great question from uh, Andre who wrote me by way of email. I'm going to go ahead and read the question and then I'm going to go ahead and respond to it. Now his question is, or his email reads, I'm not a professing Calvinist, but most of my beliefs do in fact align with it. Actually, 99% of my beliefs align with Calvinism. The only part of Calvinism I find or I have slight disagreement with is the doctrine of election. I believe that a large majority of Christians were predestined for the faith, while there are some who are lost, who went looking for truth and found it in Jesus Christ. Like when you said, my sheep hear my voice, I believe those are the elect. But there are also sheep out there without a home, and when they come to Christ in his mercy and love, takes them on as sheep. Now, I understand that my thinking may be flawed in this aspect. I hope the Lord will shed some scales off of my eyes so that I may understand it more thoroughly and correctly. Is my thinking belief flawed when it comes to election? Well, first off, to answer your question on whether or not your thinking beliefs are flawed in regards to election, yes, they are. You are wrong, and I hope through my corrective admonition, you repent and come to the truth because it does matter. And secondly, this is a great question. Any question that gets a believer to examine the and change faulty views of God to biblical views of God is a question that bore fruit. Now, how we think about the attributes and the will of God matters because it identifies which God we actually believe in, the God of the Bible or the God of our imagination. That matters. Now, to get to the question, does God elect some while others find their own way to God? Now, all, not some, but all that come to the Lord by way of faith have been elected to faith before the foundations of the world the world were laid, Ephesians 1, 4. It's not possible for someone to find God in the literal sense because no one is seeking God, Romans 3, 11. It's not possible for sinners to choose God because, it, because it's God that does the choosing, John 15, 16. It's not possible for sinners to respond to God in their own strength and will because they are dead spiritually, Ephesians 2, 1. It's not possible for a sinner to repent unto salvation because it is God who grants repentance, Acts eleven eighteen. We need to cling to the truth that God is totally sovereign in our salvation. Now, why is that important for us to cling to the notion of God's sovereignty in our salvation? Because it gives the Christian the confidence, the confidence, the hope. And what is that hope? That he who began a good work in you will complete it. Philippians 1.6. It's 100% God and 0% us. It's all God and it's all his glory. We need to cling to that. Because there is hope in that. There is no hope in believing that the sinner within his own self can seek or find God, because that's just not true. I remember when I was there, a, a professor who was a Calvinist was uh, teaching us the doctrine of election. There were 18 of us in a semicircle around the room, and he said, All right, gentlemen, if it's true that God from all eternity saves his elect and nothing's going to change that, why should we be involved in evangelism? And I was so grateful because I was on the extreme right end of the semicircle and he started his interrogation on the other side. And the first guy shook his head and said, beats me. <laughs> and the second guy said, I don't have a clue. He said, that's what I've always wondered. And I started to start the sweat because they went all the way around the room and it finally came to me and he said, well, Mr. Sproul, he said, what, do you, what would you say to that? And I said, well, I know this isn't the answer you're looking for. You want something far more profound. I said, but one reason, you know, one small reason we should be involved in evangelism is, after all, Jesus commands us to be. And he laughed, this sarcastic laugh. <laughs> he said, yes, he said, Mr. Sproul, and what could possibly be more insignificant than that your Lord, the Savior of your soul, should command you to do something? Well, I wanted to crawl under the chair at that point, and of course, as we talked about it, he also pointed out that we do evangelism not simply uh, because we're commanded to and because we believe that God is sovereign and part of uh, affirming his sovereignty is obeying his sovereign command but also it's an unspeakable privilege as Paul after giving his uh, teaching on election in chapter 9 and when he moves to chapter 10 he talks he quotes the Old Testament how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good tithing tidings God doesn't need me to round up the elect but he gives me the unspeakable privilege of participating in this work of redemption. Plus, we are told that God not only cho chooses people to be saved, but he chooses the not, not only the end, but the means to that end, the way in which he's going to bring them to salvation, 
through the power of the gospel. That's the power of God. It's God's power, not mine, but it is the power of God unto salvation. And God gives me the unspeakable privilege of preaching that gospel. And that gospel, again, gets none of its power from me, from my eloquence, from my intelligence, or any of that. It's God's power. The Holy Spirit uses that word, uses the message to quicken people's souls. So, I think it's a delight for us to be able to be engaged. And it's the same thing with prayer. God uses means. He, he works through the prayers of his people. He works through the preaching of his people to bring his ends to pass. But they most certainly come to pass. I talked to a Christian leader a few years ago after a meeting that was a critical meeting. And he said to me afterwards, he says, if we hadn't had this meeting today, millions of people would have been lost. I looked at him and I said, if we hadn't had this meeting today, not one person would have been lost. You know, because their salvation is not depending on me. Dependent on me, it's not dependent on any of us here. But God gives us the joy of participating in it.